What's going on everybody? I'm Johnny Brook. Welcome back to another Craft and Workshop video and welcome to my home theater. So in case you guys missed it, I recently did a kind of home theater makeover video and one of the core pieces for that whole makeover was this beautiful sofa called the Love Sack Sectional that we're sitting on. That's right. And I've got the founder of Love Sack here, Sean. Good to be doing, with man? you, man. I'm great. Yeah. This is amazing. This Dude. is perfect. Yeah, it literally is perfect. We've got about two inches to spare on, on either amazing. side. With no planning per se. I mean, <laughs> yeah, just, just not yes. like a custom sofa. No, no, no. Yeah, just using the uh, configuration tool on y'all's website. That's cool. Which, I mean, that, that really made it easy because obviously this is a pretty big piece. So totally. having it not fit would have been problematic. Right. But anyway, so Love Sack, in case you guys don't know, is a very popular uh, kind of furniture business. This started with this giant bean bag, actually named yeah. Love Sack. I love Sack. And so this is the sectional. And so they run a really cool furniture business. Uh, this is completely customizable. Uh, so I figured it would be interesting to sit down and talk to Sean, because I know a lot of you guys are either wanting to start you know, smaller custom furniture businesses or already have custom furniture businesses or maybe want to move into product type stuff. So I know I personally love hearing you know, how companies like this got started and uh, what, what better chance than to just chat with you. Well, thanks for inviting me over. Yeah, man. yeah. So let's start, I guess, at the beginning, you know, how, how you got things going with Love Sack yeah. and why you decided to make a giant beanbag. Well, you know, just like you were saying, we too began as a small custom yeah. furniture business, if you dare to call giant beanbags furniture. Um, I, look, I wish I had a better, you know, story. I was 18 years old, 10 days out of high school. Yeah. And watching The Price is Right, eating a bowl of Cap'n Crunch, and I just had this dumb idea, like, how funny would that be to make a bean bag like this big, like the whole floor? And uh, so I got off the couch right then, uh, turned off the TV, drove down to Joanne's Fabrics, nice. and bought seven yards of vinyl, nice. uh, tan, and seven yards of black vinyl. Took it home, cut it out, kind of like a baseball, two figure eights. Yeah. Began sewing it together on my mom's machine. I couldn't sew, so my neighbor helped me finish it and put a zipper in it, and then I commenced to find bean, you know, bean bag beads. Yeah, I was gonna say, where but, do you find a well, large quantity of beans? <laughs> After clearing out the top <laughs> shelf of Michael's, which did nothing, you know, three little bags, yeah, yeah. I, I was like, this isn't gonna work. So I just looked around the house for soft stuff, and I found my parents' camping mattresses. Nice. You know, like rolled up piece of foam yeah, with a yeah, bunch yeah. of cord. And yeah, they, yeah, totally. And I chopped it up on a paper cutter, like the kind of thing you chop paper with and turn it this way and chop it, you know, just little pieces and, and, and it was getting squishy and that was cool because instead of a bean bag that was yeah. actually kind of crunchy, yeah. this turned out like a giant pillow. I mean, it took me three weeks wow. of chopping up mattresses, old blankets, um, more mattresses, anything I could find that was soft, but the, but the foam yeah. made it so different. And That's now this crazy. thing was big enough to fill the back of a, sh of a truck, That's a pickup crazy. truck. So we, we were taking it to drive-ins, uh, back then, we were taking this is in Utah where I grew up. We we're taking it to the uh, like the beach, go camping on it. Yeah, it would sleep like four or five of us head to toe. Wow! And everyone, everywhere I took it, I was like, Oh my gosh, where did you get that? <laughs> and I was, I was like, Man, I'm never gonna make another one. It was terrible. It took me three weeks. And yeah. So I kind of forgot about it, and I and I and I took off, and I actually served a mission for my church for two years. Forgot about this thing. Came back at at 21 years old pulled it out of the garage again and going to college and taking it around. Everyone's like, dude, that's so cool. And finally my neighbors convinced me to make them one. So this is three years later. Wow. I make the second uh, giant bean bag, but I'm, I'm going to sell it to them. So I needed a name, right? Yeah. I need a business. Sure. Yeah. And so uh, I'm just kind of working my day job. I was, I was slinging cell phones nice. in, at a kiosk in Home Depot, nice. paying my way through college. And I need a name for this bean bag, not bean bag company, you know, love, peace, hate, war, hippie, bean bag, 70s bag, love bag, love sack. Oh, that's cool. Man, that's paid, crazy. We <laughs> paid 25 bucks to register the name Love Sack in 1998. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, and started making them for friends and whatever, and their friends wanted one. And, and, I, and I was, I found this old furniture factory in Salt Lake that made couches. And it turns out they had all this wasted foam. Like when they cut out a couch, uh, yeah. you know, they have all this scrap. Sure, like your woodshop, you have all this scrap, scrap. Yeah. scrap foam. And so they would let me kind of sweep it up. And then they even had a foam shredder they hadn't used in years. Nice. Because I was at home cutting this stuff out by hand. Yeah. And they laughed at me. And I fixed their foam shredder. It's kind of like a wood chipper. If you've ever used a wood sure. chipper and yeah, shove yeah. branches, it's just like that. 
and we would shove these big pieces of foam in and shake around and like anyway now we could stuff a sack in like an hour yeah so it became like a viable business and me and my buddies man you know school in the morning down at the factory in the afternoon delivering a love sack in this old van and then uh what were you selling for back then uh I, I like two or three hundred bucks okay. and, and they didn't have removable covers they yeah. were just you know vinyl yeah and they had this weird breather patch that said loves because it had the air had to get in and out. So. Oh yeah, that's true. Otherwise, otherwise they'd be, like, just a be like a balloon. Yeah, and so <laughs> we solved those vinyl. problems. But anyway, and and it started and at university it was like people started rocking our t-shirts. Nice. We sell them at like May Fest, October Fest, you know, ten yeah, by ten yeah. booth beer fest. Nice. You know these kind of places and just kind of paid the money to be at the home show, boat show, RV show, whatever we could be at. Yeah. We'd sell nine or ten of them, whatever. And then finally we got an order from Red Bull. Red Bull, uh, I was dating the Red Bull girl, you know, like oh, yeah. more cars or uh-huh. And she got me in with their, anyway, they bought 50 love sacks nice. that they'd use at their snowboarding events or whatever. And we're like, man, like, that's crazy. How can we get more orders like that? Yeah. So we took it to a trade show in Chicago, set up a, this dumb booth, you know, with our banner, stood there and like tucked in our shirt, looked all professional. <laughs> and um, nobody bought anything. Oh, And so we're like rough. 10 grand into it. And I'm about to graduate. I have this real job waiting for me that yeah. pays a lot. I'm like, you know what, guys? We got to close this thing down. This will never be a real business. It was fun for three years in college, but I, you know, time to move on. And then my, I was literally actually down stuffing a love sack on that wood chipper thing. My phone rings. Um, it's an out of state number. So I thought, you know, turn off the shredder, love sack mm-hmm. corporation, brush the foam out of my hair, yeah. you know? And it turns out it's, it's the limited corporation. So they have these little girl stores called limited Two. now okay. they're called justice. They're in the mall. Yep. No. So this is like Victoria's secret bath and body. Works, yeah, a sure. huge corporation Big mall brands. And they said, we want fit. We want 12,000 little love sacks for Christmas. Whoa. You know, we want to shrink it down like you do. We'll, we'll put them in our stores. And, and I said, no problem. They FedEx me this piece of fabric. I, it was too expensive. I went to North Carolina. Nice. Came out to North Carolina to find this fabric at High Point. Yeah. It was it was too expensive. I'm about to give up again. Thinking, by the way, I don't know how this college student about to graduate. I'm waiting tables. As my, yeah. Yeah. How are you going to pay job. for it? Yeah. I'm going to buy thirty thousand yards of fabric. Yeah. And this guy says, "Look, I'm a direct importer. You're not going to find it any cheaper." And I'm looking around this guy's booth, and he's got these fabric sample boxes with Chinese writing on them. And so my my mission for my church that I mentioned was in Taiwan. I learned Mandarin yeah. Chinese. Gotcha. Imagine that. Yeah. So I could read this nice. Chinese on these yeah. boxes. So Same it was the address of the fabric mill. So I flew over to China, found the fabric mill, <laughs> bought it at cost. Wow. They cut them, sewed them. They demanded a deposit. I twisted the limited's arm and I said, you know, I'm here, I'm here in China at my factory. I need a $65,000 deposit to get started. They said, we don't give it to I said, we've never done a deal without it. Anyway, they wired me 65 grand wow. to my University of Utah credit union account. <laughs> And anyway, uh, bought the sacks, brought them back, built a factory using a tractor and a hay buster. So if you've ever driven out in the country and seen those giant rolls of uh-huh. hay, yeah. those are meant to be ground up in a giant hay grinder that, that's pulled by a tractor. Okay. And so that was the only way I could shred that much foam that I mean, that I could afford. I couldn't yeah, afford yeah. like a half a million dollar German yeah, yeah. foam shredder. So we literally got an agricultural loan from the U.S. government wow. um, to buy this tractor and a hay grinder and then bring it to downtown Salt Lake City. Anyway, put the hay, hay buster inside, started shredding foam by the ton, Yeah. you know, buying these big bales of foam from like Lazy Boy and, yeah. and Pottery Barn or whatever. And were you still using like scrap mm-hmm. foam at that point? Or just yeah. Like, so we still nice. do today. So all of the foam in a love sack today is recycled foam. It's yeah. essentially the sc- leftovers from all the big furniture awesome. guys. Here in yeah. North Carolina. Well, I know you guys use a lot of recycled materials in the fabric. Too. Yeah, yeah. Well, so then what happened is we opened a store because uh, all the furniture companies told us it was stupid. Yeah. Like nobody wants this brand called Love Sack and these $500 not bean bags. <laughs> so we opened our own store in a mall in yeah. Salt Lake and uh, they let us in because they had extra space. They were going to, they were just like, they were going to find a real tenant, you know, after yeah. Christmas. Anyway. We, did, we crushed it. We did so well. People came in and wanted a franchise. We started doing that. Nice. Fast forward many, many years. We have 90 locations. Along the way, we invented this product you're sitting on sacks. Yeah. Because in the first Love Sack store, there was a couch. Okay. And it was just there to look pretty. And yeah. we had our sacks down here, right? And, and, a, and it's big screen. Yeah. And, pe- and you come down, you know, flop in, you know, enjoy the music, whatever, and buy a Love Sack. But people would ask, like, well, how much is this couch? 
and I couldn't deal with the couch. You know, they're, they're too big, they're too hard to move, sure. they're too hard to ship yeah. in one color, let alone this sectional, that sectional, sure. matching ottoman, armchair. So um, we started playing with two by fours in the garage yeah. and breaking couches down and, and, re and it reinvented them. So sectional is what you're sitting on, right? It's just these two pieces now. Yeah. The seat and the side, and the side can work as an arm or a back, and you've shown that. It's just brilliant, because I mean, I mean, you guys will have seen the assembly video if you watched the home theater makeover, but the way it goes together, I mean, it's so fast, you can ship it non-freight, mm -hmm. yeah, and FedEx. you can completely reconfigure it anytime you want, change all the covers, and I mean, it's, yeah. it, that's, I think what also fascinated me about y'all's brand is just, as like a person who builds stuff, and you know, kind of engineering mind, it's just so cool to have come Thank up you. with something like this. Well, we got, look, we, here's the, here's the funny thing. So when we first invented sectionals in our mind and we, and we drew them out yeah. and we got the dimensions right, which we have patented around the world. So that's why you've never seen anything like this. Yeah, sure. I mean, it looks like a sectional, but as you've seen, it Absolutely not. behaves very differently. And um, cause you have a patent on that mathematical relationship. Yeah. And what's cool is when I first took it to that same furniture company that let me use their shredder, they, they said, I can't, I gave them the drawings. I gave them our two by four prototype. I couldn't do the springs and stuff. So yeah, I needed yeah. their equipment and I needed them to like, you know, do the joints and everything. I said, build this. And I came back two weeks later to see it. And, and this guy showed me this little removable cover sectional. He had, you know, like corner piece, middle mm -hmm. piece. I mean, like you'd find it pottery barn yeah. or whatever. And I said, he said, these will go so well in your stores. You're going to sell, you know, sell, sell out of it. I said, no, no, no. I said, where's the thing I showed you? Yeah. And he's like, oh, he's like, that won't work. And he's like, look, I've made furniture for 40 years. My dad's made furniture for 40 years before that. It won't hold together, it won't be sturdy, it won't be comfortable. Yeah. Like, won't work. And so I was, I was pissed. Yeah. And then, so then we took it to another furniture maker, Al's Custom Upholstery, and, and said, you know, here's our drawings, here's our prototypes, make it. Came back two weeks later, and you know what he did? So? Same thing. Oh. Wow. I'm not even making this up made me a little sectional with with you know the slip cut looks like a yeah. sheet over it and i'm like where's the thing i gave you and he's like oh that won't work and my point is this man we were too dumb yeah to know that it wouldn't work mm. you know what i mean we were we were we were so naive sure, yeah. that we believed it could we work had ambition and well, but these we, are all jaded guys who already all, been in right the and so and, and so like i it was such like a light bulb for me where your industry knowledge or your expertise can be a huge stumbling block because totally. now, fast forward, Love Sack, right now, and I don't mean to boast at all, but we're the fastest growing furniture retailer in That's the awesome. United States, have been for a few years. Sactionals is like 90% of our sales. Yeah. Sacks are still growing fast, but Sactionals is just exploding. Oh, yeah. And it's because it's a, it's, a, it's a product that, I mean, essentially now, we just met, but I hope you have these the rest of your life. Oh, I agree. You know, I mean, you can, they can grow with you. You can add to them. You well, can change them. Y'all are doing so much right. You know, with with all of the recycled materials and, and yeah. even the the packaging, the amount of that that was recyclable and it's all recyclable. Yeah. And so and and that's so as we well, this is this is the last big unlock for us was when we backed up and looked at why people like sectionals and why they were taking off. It had a lot to do with the fact that they can let their cat be on them yeah. or they can let their kids eat totally. on them or yeah. whatever. It's like, you don't have to worry anymore. Yeah. And you know, when we grew up, it's like, get off the couch. Oh yeah. Don't eat well, on the couch. like the plastic covers, you know, right. from sofas at, at grandma's house, that's you like, know, like that's ridiculous. Right. And so once people understand, look, you can wash it, you can change it. Someday you can just go totally new with it. Yeah. Or, you know, split it in half if you break up or whatever. Like, yeah. Whatever life throws at you. <laughs> I just need a love seat now. <laughs> that's right. Just an arm She chair. took half my cup. <laughs> But she can. But yeah. here's the cool thing, right? Like whatever life throws at you, this thing will adapt. And, yeah. that's our, and so we've come up with this whole philosophy called designed for life. Yeah. Which essentially means we only make things that are built to last a lifetime, because these are, mm -hmm. but designed to evolve with you as like you have more kids. Yeah. Maybe you move, whatever life throws at you. And so if you think about what you own, what things do you own that are built to last a lifetime and can evolve with you as your taste change? Yeah, very, very little. It's very rare. And so yeah. I think as we continue to invent things that do that, I think we'll have success. But but we didn't have that coming up. We Look, yeah. we were just surviving. We made sure. big bean bags. We tried to survive. We started making these couch things. It took a decade to figure it out. It yeah. took another decade to, to like get people to want it yeah. out of these stores called Love Sack. 
But now I think, you know, it's a serious business and yeah. and we went public That's a couple awesome. years ago and we're living the dream and it's it's still a lot of work, but we've got a lot more coming and yeah. It's been fun, but That's awesome, man. Yeah. So what advice, I guess, would you have for people who are, are trying to start their own business as somebody who's, who's you know, started and grown and built a very successful one? Yeah. Like, is there any kind of basic, I think, foundational knowledge that you think would mm -hmm. help people out in that beginning stage or if they're oh, trying yeah. to take the next step in, in product stuff? I mean, I know that's, that's a tough well, there's so No, there's so many. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 look, I always start with the name of my personal form. Yeah. You just get off the couch. It's a like, beautiful you have mantra. this idea. Get off the couch. Go make yeah. it. Go do it now. And that applies so much to me. Y'all watching it. this? Yeah. I mean, if, if you're watching YouTube videos on how to build stuff and, and you're not building anything, right? Because you're you know scared or whatever excuse you might have, you know try to push past it because it, it can be so rewarding. Mm -hmm. I mean, working for somebody else can be great, but building your own business is unlike anything you well know? and and think of the example i shared of those experts yeah totally who told me it wouldn't work yeah and so if you think you're dumb or you think you're not an expert like embrace that yeah and follow your gut like we had a gut like this thing's cool yeah and it could be something and so we just kept pursuing it and so i think following your instincts and not being willing to give up you know but you've got to adapt mm -hmm. like like sectionals have changed a lot sure. since our first prototypes yeah but the basic idea we just stuck with no matter what. And I yeah. think, um, and now it's leading us to new places and our whole design philosophy is leading us to invent new things that I think are gonna be just as big or bigger. Yeah. And you know, just, you just gotta keep going. Cause if I can rewind to the time I was first selling a giant bead bag to my friends in college, there's no way I could have had a vision for what this could be. So if yeah. you don't have a vision or you can't see past like, well, how could I ever make more than a few hundred bucks doing this? Sure. Or whatever it is. Yeah. Like you. Just, just go. We were making just videos, I'm sure, you know, as a side hustle. Absolutely. It was just purely a hobby. And, you know, I, I wanted to build some furniture for our house. And I had never built any furniture before. And I was, mm -hmm. the way I was learning was watching other people doing this, mm -hmm. doing the YouTube thing. So, you know, I had video and marketing background. So I was like, well, I'll try to capture some of this and maybe, maybe it'll lead somewhere, you know? Mm -hmm. And, and it has so yeah it's uh it's it is very much a difficult thing to get past that initial yeah. starting stage because there's a lot of reasons to not start doing something and you know yeah. everybody's busy and they got jobs and kids and whatever well, and i think it speaks to patience too yeah right like you got to be ambitious mm -hmm. and driven but you also just got to give it time and, and be willing to put in the work because yeah. there's I don't think any way around that. I mean, so. you've been at this for I've been full years. time for, yeah, like three, three and a half years, something yeah. like that. So, yeah. And many years before that, before were you blogging? Right? Oh, yeah. Before I mean, I've been, on. I've had some kind of website blog video thing for, I'm 31, probably uh, 11 years now. Yeah. So, and it, it, the first three or four or five were not, you know, viable yeah. and yeah. not successful. And that's fine because I learned a heck of a lot along the way, you know, like I didn't know how to do a WordPress website or edit right. in Final Cut Pro or any of the things that like I do every single day now. And I was just able to figure it out along the way. And, you know, I got like a business degree, but I didn't <laughs> learn really any of this stuff, you know, so. You learn it all, all by doing, man. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, I'm 21 years into since when I first registered that name, Love yeah. Sack. And by the way, I feel like we're just getting started. Like we have so Dude, many yeah. new things coming. Well, I mean, I think it, you know, I was telling you before that like the way I found you guys was through your, you know, armrest, what did you call them? The U? Oh, the U, the U yeah, drinks. The U drinks, yeah. yeah it's like thing. an armrest cup holder. Yeah. And I was looking around because I've, I've been wanting to build something like this for a while. So and you're going to build your own now? I, like, I'm going to take you to the next level? Maybe, yeah, maybe. That, that would you be can do better cool, than this. Actually. Yeah. The I mean, this is pretty is sweet. Cool, Dude, I, 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 mean, I didn't see. I'm an you can park a car. edge guy. Oh, you yeah. You can park a car on the Super thing. strong. These things are... Well, and they just fit so That's well. That was that was what kept me from building them. Is that none <laughs> of my sofas have this kind of dimension arm profile. Yeah, right, right. But anyway, so yeah, obviously, I'm sure you guys are gonna be continuing to to crush. I mean, it's, I'll try. It's pretty awesome, man. Well, look, we I appreciate 
you getting into sectionals. I feel like it was made for, it all helped me out. for your, you know, your vibe and yeah. the way that you put things together and yeah. glad to be part of your home, man. Yeah. So, I mean, if you guys aren't already familiar with this product, after seeing the main video, definitely go check it out. Uh, you want to promote your channel and yeah, Instagram so, stuff and whatever. Yeah. If you're an entrepreneur, uh, get on my vlog, YouTube, subscribe. Uh, get off the couch. I'll be Very cool doing stuff. a little vlog about my coming out here to North Carolina and what I do and my crazy entrepreneurial travels. I interview a lot of different entrepreneurs and yeah. whatnot. And, um, and you know, check out lovesack.com. For sure. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks a lot, Sean. Thanks, and uh, I think that's going to do it, y'all. So until next time, happy building.